you're still standing up, and it is the 8th of April, I believe, and our special guest is G- it's the 9th. <laughs> I hear that in my ears. Okay. Uh, uh, what's in my cup? Just water. Jill Michelle Melian. Okay. Yes. Bo- boom. boom thum, and boom. we're off. And we're off. And we're off. I just did a I slate. Did. I did an old school slate with my hands. We're talking about old school earlier. Yes. I think I'm, I am a psychic. I'm not kidding you when I tell you this. I'm just going to give you one little psychic hit I have okay. on you. You are old soul. Am I correct? Okay. Well, now let me ask you this because then you I heard something reverse recently. reverse with a question. Yes. Reverse with I... a question. I made a statement. It's a yes or no. Two are you comics old, in a room. Are you old soul? You're topping me now yes. all of a sudden? No, I have to say this before I even yes. answer that. Okay. I would initially would have said yes, but recently yeah. I heard from... Dolores uh, Cantos, I think it's her last name, Dolores Cantos. She's like a big psychic, yeah, older lady. Huge, yeah. She said, when people say old soul, that means that they have not learned their lessons. So they've been back so many times. And so they're kind of dumb. She's like, so you want to say. <laughs> I'm sorry. That, yeah. And I was like, oh. And she's like, you want to say that you're a new soul because you came here to conquer and to the. So okay. I'm now I'm like, this is the All first right. time I heard that, though. OK, well, so, can I, but I know can I mean. blow back on that a little yes. bit and tell you my intention on what I meant by that? And I do get these really big psychic hits. I'm ta- my psychic hits are always about the past, by mm, the way. It's okay. never I'm going to predict who won the, who's going to win the World Series in two well, years. Damn. Then. None of that. <laughs> It's more about, so tell me if this is correct. When you were growing up, you found yourself more mature than others and didn't want to hang with people your age. Absolutely. Then there you go. That's yeah. not dumb. No. That's not. actually smart. You're smarter yeah. than them. You probably, I'm not saying you were arrogant, but you felt smarter. You felt more wise. Yeah. You felt like this is immature. And that's my psychic hit to start our show. Craig, you're totally correct because I just wanted to skip all of school and go. go to do what I wanted to do because I already yeah. knew. Like, I, I already knew I what love, I wanted to I do. I love when my hits work. <laughs> <laughs> At first, though, you were thinking, oh, no, Dolores uh, says this is Dolores. incorrect. When she said that, I was like, oh, yeah. I'm so I get confused. it what she's saying, but, but yes. that's what I'm yeah. saying is you have this my son, by the mm-hmm. way, is he's 14, he's at least 75 years old and way more mature than I am and laughs at me <laughs> like I'm an idiot. Really, he really That's does. Awesome. So he's got this, he's been here many times before. Mm-hmm. Certainly not dumb, he's actually the smartest. And it's amazing to me to watch an old soul work. Mm-hmm. And I picked that up with you right away. Yeah. We don't really know one another, but that's the first thing I get is there's like this maturity to the point where Maybe even, now I'm going a little further, <laughs> maybe even what your work is, which is a lot of improvisation, is almost like a way to be immature. Like the, you, <laughs> To be a kid. To be a kid. Mm-hmm. That you kind of skip the kid part, and now this is your way of coming. <laughs> I'm like a therapist now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> is I love there it. any validity to what I'm saying? I, I mean, that you just do you express yourself in these yeah. well, mad TV or whatever it is. You play characters. Wow, I can be someone else now mm-hmm. instead of this serious soul that uh, it doesn't really resonate with some of these immature people. That's my my favorite thing. And I think that's why stand up was harder for me where you had to like find your voice where in the beginning of my career and even as a little kid, I would throw myself into characters mm. and I'd lose myself completely. Yeah. And if you see me on Mad TV, old school Mad TV, like you put me in a wig, my face changes completely. Yes. And I that is my freedom, that is my love. Like I oh, it just grazes me. It makes it's me amazing. so happy. And I feel like you know, there's a lot of movies that are out where they go, oh, my gosh, this person's range. They can do comedy. They can do it. And I sit there and I get frustrated a lot because I go, I haven't had that opportunity yeah. to show them that. Right. And it's like, that's who we are. Like, well, they label yeah. you in this business. Totally. You get labeled right away. You're a sketch artist. Right. And then that's it. Now that's you can't it. do anything else. Yeah. And we're going to get to you actually took that label somewhere else. One of the reasons I'm having you in is I really do believe in the creator who made us really creative and that's abundant and magnificent and has no limits. Yeah. And that's how you live. We're going to get to what you did when you were faced with something, when you're in this box that they put you in. Yeah. And then you're just, okay, I'm not staying here. Yeah. You know, I'm going to listen to this inner voice inside of me and just express myself in another way. Mm-hmm. And that, it, and that's one of the reasons I kind of gravitated towards people like that, towards you. I don't, like I said, I don't really know you, but I know you. 
And that just happens sometimes when you just pick up a vibe, mm -hmm. and that's the vibe that you're putting out there, whether you like it or not. Well, thank you. <laughs> it's interesting you said that because there was a, a moment, you know, where sometimes I'll watch the Oscars or, you know, and I have a, that weird moment. I'm like, oh, that person is really easy to control. And I'll, I go, oh, I get it. It, it's a weird moment, and and I go, I'm not easy to control. Interesting, yeah. And it's like, as much as I want to be there, this is God's place that's put me here because mm. I'm thriving, but it's not there because then I would be controlled and I'm not able to be controlled. I like to say we're the indies. Yeah. We are independent. Yeah. And that's offensive to studios and yeah. studio executives and bean counters and people aren't creative. I mean, that's what... People go, why aren't you famous? Well, you know, I mean, I made it pretty far. I yeah, did pretty well, did. but yeah. maybe the next level was not meant for me because I can't do that. And maybe that's for the sure. case with you as well. For sure. Like, look, like my idols growing up were like Joan Crawford, Betty Davis. <laughs> and then as I got older, I realized what their real stories were. You know, and you're like, oh, yeah, I couldn't do that. <laughs> you know, uh, it's like, yeah. oh, no. What a life. My book title is called Get Out of Line and Into Alignment. That's beautiful. It's like we get in these lines, mm -hmm. and they got in line in the studio system. Mm -hmm. That's the system that they operated in, and they had to, especially women. Oh, yeah. my God, you had to be this and that. You had to wear this and wear that. Oh. And you had to date this person and that person. Imagine being Barbara Stanwyck in that era. Oh, man. You know, her story yes. was full lesbian. And then she's, like, and, having to date directors and... <laughs> Exactly. exactly. <laughs> there was no one coming out then. Yeah, no. And no rights and, and things like, I mean, and he just made her into this, you know, uh, ingenue or whatever it was. And that's what they did with people. And they had gay men, that were, you know, like Rock Hudson. Right. They would set him up with Doris Day or whatever. They control us. Mm -hmm. And you and I and people like us of our ilk are not to be controlled. Yeah. So you worked on Mad TV. Yes. A little bit of control, but. They did allow you to, once you're immersed in these characters, mm -hmm. just fly. That's the thing. Lights, camera, action. Yeah. Uh, it's, you're, I'm in it. And it's yeah. like the, uh, the whole other world just, it just goes away. And just you yeah. are performing. And that's where, that's where my heartbeat is like, this wow. is, I'm yeah. so connected. This is what I'm going to be doing. You hear the laughter. You're just like, you know how it is on stage, even yeah. um, as a stand-up. When that, that roars of laughter happen, you you go, that's why I'm here. Mm. This is why I'm supposed to be here. It's not an ego thing. And nope. that's what like nope. some people opposite. 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 Now there are it, comics that are all ego. Absolutely. You know that. Be your, be you, you're you're yeah. aware that you are being of service to yes. people. And that and I love that you were use the word connected. Yeah. Because it's a divine connection mm -hmm. that's taking place. And the divine is beautiful. I mean, that's when it's just pure. Yeah. There's no uh, thought or, you know, there's no fear. Mm -hmm. You're in moments. You're in mindfulness. You're in consciousness. You're in that moment. And it's, it's, and it's cyclical. It goes to the audience, goes back, back to you. To or even if yep. it's two people in the room or one person in the room, it doesn't matter. You're in that, gen I call it genuine energy flow. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like it. It's magical. It's magical. And even like when it was like I had the honor, and it's so funny because you think like, Oh my God, I was on the Dolby stage and I had the honor to perform on the Dolby stage. And it was just a 10 minute set. I was the only comic on this like Lat Latinas de Hoy or something like this. And this place is packed. I'm thinking, this is where the Oscars are. Like, I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> and everyone goes, were you nervous? And I went, not at all. Wow. I stepped on that stage and it felt like heaven. Mm. And to hear laughter and then it rolled and mm. rolled and you could feel that connection going boom, ba, 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 all the way to the top. And you just go, all the pain that I've been through mm. is I'm sharing with you in a funny matter. Yeah. You all can relate and now you're healing. It, and that's what comedy's always been to me. Yeah. So the whole like woke generation and stuff, I, I took a step back because yeah. I just went, I'm not here to offend anybody, but no. I'm here to let's all laugh at each other. Let's laugh at stuff. Like, really, does it have to be, you know, does it have to be just because? Well, now they're monitoring us. The, yeah, the woke exactly. people, who, the, the left, which I was always a big part of it because I thought yeah. that was about compassion and empathy, have become completely intolerant. Intolerant. Deciding it's censorship. Mm -hmm. the, that's the irony. It's absolute censorship. And I had to leave. I'm so, sorry. I'm not going to be a part of this. I'm not going to go the other way either. Right. I'm going to be in this pocket where you are as well, mm -hmm. 
where we're listening to our, our source, listening to that vibration that's inside that most people probably never even experience it. It's, it really is, I use the word magical. It really is, it's like a fantasy. When you have that, do you remember when you had it for the first time? When you Think mean back like, of childhood, like oh. a moment in time. I know when mine was. I mean, it was there a time you're in school, you're at home, or whatever it was. Oh, that was <laughs> that was something special. Do you remember yeah. it? I I remember. I can't maybe remember the first time, but I remember a consistency of my friends always making them laugh. I would come home. My parents wouldn't have seen a movie. And I would come home, reenact the whole movie, make them sit on the couch. Oh, I love it. And I do every character, and they would just laugh. Name a like, movie. Let me. I want to hear the movie. Mm, my goodness, I'd have to ask them. But like off the top of my head, oh my gosh, um, uh, uh, the the one with Eddie Murphy and um, Trading Places. And I came okay. home and did every character. Oh, that's wild. And they were laughing so hard. Now, if I did that today, oh, you can't do. Oh, well, what are you doing? Oh, you know, he's black. He's black. <laughs> you know, you're like, oh my god, it was just like. And I'm a kid, you know, yeah. and I, I did this and they laugh so hard and they would say, I don't need to see the movie. You're better than the movie. Like, this was awesome. So did you do the laugh? Yeah. The Eddie oh, yeah. Murphy laugh? <laughs> 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 you know, and I'm a kid and I had, my impressions were terrible sure, and it was sure. like, did it matter? It was it's so like, entertaining. And, so and much you're fun. You're lighting up the room and it's lighting yeah. you back. Yeah. If people only could experience that. And I think that everyone should just let go and just let it fly. Yeah. And don't worry about all of the judgment. You know, I can't do it. I, I do an impression of Morgan Freeman, right? Oh, let me see it. <clears throat> you saw Sha Shawshank Redemption? Mm -hmm. In 1966, I am the Dufresne. Left Shawshank Prison. <laughs> all I found was a old rock hammer and they went down to the nub and old muddy prison clothes. And the Dufresne. <laughs> and the. And the. <laughs> I was a, And the. Now, he's black, so I'm not right. supposed to do that. You're not supposed to do that. No, I definitely no. Shouldn't, <laughs> yeah. shouldn't put any makeup yeah. on either, but, but it that's sounds what's beautiful. weird. What's weird like is, I, you know, I do I do Liam Neeson, but that's okay because he's white. You exactly. Know? Nobody's going looking around the room. I just think there's so much inauthentic. It's, it's inauthentic mm -hmm. to look around the room to see, is this okay to be doing this? That they well, they say you can't say, yeah. you know. Well, when I was on, um, you know, Matt TV, Frank Caliendo, his voices oh, are incredible. Unbelievable. And I always said, put him on radio so then no one sees him. So then right. he, they won't know, <clears throat> you know, and he could do everybody because he could do everybody. everybody. Unbelievable. And, you know, so I don't even know where Frank is now today. He's but in Arizona. Is he yeah. in Arizona? And okay. he still, he still kills it on the circuit. It, it didn't help that John Madden died. That was his number, number one. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> when your number one impression dies, like, Don Knotts was my number one. <laughs> really? Oh, man. And, uh, yeah, he died a few years ago. And, oh. you know, there, there went my Don Knotts impression. <laughs> <laughs> I did him so well that I looped him. Oh, in a movie, really? half of the movie is me because he was sick. If you watch oh the movie gosh. Pleasantville, wow! You ever see Pleasantville? Yeah, I love he Pleasantville. He plays a TV repairman. Uh -huh. Half the like he circles the apple on a telestrator. Mm -hmm. That's me doing him as an old guy. That's so like great. I did Barney Fife and Mister you know Furley and all that. Yeah, but I had to do him like and make him old, and that became you know he can become a character. Yeah. So he circles the apple on a telestrator. It's my voice going, <laughs> boom! What do you call that right there, bud? The <laughs> forbidden fruit here in Pleasantville. I'm your TV <laughs> repairman bud oh yes so so you know uh, but again he's not black so i can do him but <laughs> once once he passed away eh, you know you could do a little nostalgic one but it's, yeah. it just doesn't have the same effect and That's by the way true. impressions these days who do you do who do i do no i mean, in, who, who in does general? one do anymore because <sighs> it's there aren't icons like you could do share back in the day well, the icons I do don't like exist Drew anymore. Barrymore and like oh, Sofia Vergara, you know, things like so. You do Sofia Vergara. I do Sofia Vergara. See, I'm so glad to be here, Craig. Oh, <laughs> yeah, God. so I'll fall in love. <laughs> She's my, my my kids make fun of me. <laughs> she is hilarious. Yeah. I met her in person once. I like the sense and, of humor that she has. Too. Oh, she's so and she is drop dead gorgeous. Oh, my like God. I am like, hello. Um It's and, really yes. it's really should be a crime. And she's divorced right. now, so you know I'm thinking. Oh, oh maybe she's going to go wrong. She likes funny people. <laughs> you, you, you never know. You never I'm know. newly divorced. She's newly yes. divorced. Let's heal together, Sophia. Hey. So just be her right now. I'm going to ask you out. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Craig. Hi, Sophia. It's oh, I can't even do it. I can't even, I can't even do the fictitious. <laughs> no, come on, talk to me. I, I like you. I can't even do the fictitious version. <laughs> no, please. Well, <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god. Whisper sweet nothings in my ear. How about Drew Barrymore? Let me hear oh, Drew, Drew Barrymore. It's so great to be here. <laughs> no, really, my talk show's doing amazing. And maybe one day you'll have a talk show, Craig. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Your mouth becomes her. People yeah. always tell me you look like Don Knotts when you imitate. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. Like you know, the whole face. But your face turns Changed. into, and that's what you're talking yeah. about. When you really get into a character, that's what happens. Yeah. You be, they, they take over your body. Completely. It's amazing. And I it's just so watched fun. you became Drew Barrymore for a second. I did it on her too, by the way. Dude. She's beautiful. She's single too. Is she, is she single now? Yeah. I think she is, yeah. But, My but, gosh. She's yeah. so pretty. They're all so beautiful. Maybe I just picked the most beautiful people to do uh, impressions of. <laughs> so I'm like, you're gorgeous. Let me beat you for a second. <laughs> <laughs> I picked Don Knotts and, yeah. and, and, and Morgan Freeman. Yeah. <laughs> not not pretty. Uh, uh, Liam Neeson's good looking. Oh, he's good looking, man. I have a very right. special set of skills. Skills I've acquired over a long career. <laughs> skills that help me deal with people like you. If you let my daughter go, I will not find you. I will not look for you. But if you don't, I will find you, and I will kill you. That's good. Does it look like him? That was good. That <laughs> That's good. That's a brand new one for me. I like that one. You worked with Carlos Alizraki on yeah. Reno 911. Yeah, <laughs> Reno 911. And then we toured together for like five years. No. Yeah, we toured together for that long. He's like my brother. Together. Yeah. And he was like, I, I would open up for him. And I just developed so much time. And that was a time when he was doing a lot of impressions. Mm -hmm. And we had so much fun together because um, we're adventurous comics. Like, um, I'm not one of the comics that just wants to stay in my hotel room all day long. I want to, like, go explore. So we would find, like, graveyards and, like, do things wow. like that or do, like, you know, a find a sky um, thing where, you know, you're skydiving. And, sure. And you mean when you... Like when you're when, when you're you in float, the tunnel, when yeah. You, that's that. That's, by the way, I'm pretty athletic. That's not as easy as it hard. looks. It's hard. It is so hard. I was like, I was like, damn it, am I too fat or something? <laughs> I would sink like I do in water. It is so hard. They get the fans yes. coming up, and it keeps you. No, that's not easy. It I, is not easy. I did better at skydiving for real, like for real? jumping out okay. of a plane. I did much better. <laughs> yeah, this one you have to find. Yeah. The, and then get into get it. That balance. And yeah. I'll tell you, we went in and out. He did it too. The two of you did yeah, it. Yeah, he's really good. How oh, is he? Uh, he's real good. Um, we went in like. Uh, two minute intervals, like just three times, um, and six minutes. My whole body, from my head all the way down to my toes, was hurting for like yeah, weeks. Yeah, exactly. Like, I was like, "Oh my god!" <laughs> so, but it was so you, fun. You were on tour. Was it some? What the, was it? A Reno nine one one tour? Was no, it? A, um, was it a we, Latina tour? <laughs> we kind of we kind of turned it into. So Carlos had all these headlining gigs for being on Reno 911, and yeah. I had just come off Mad TV and then did a few episodes of Reno. It was Reno. a few years ago, like 10, 10 oh, years yeah. ago? Oh, yeah. It was like 10 years ago. Oh, okay. And so then, um, so then he was just like, he hates being on the road by himself, and he doesn't like the local comics that come, come yeah. in. So he was making good money. I'm the and, same way, yeah. Yeah, and he was just like, Jilly, do you want to like do this? And I was like, yes, because I needed to learn as a comic. I can't learn in L.A. as a comic, and develop time oh you, know? you get your chops on the road yeah. yeah so i definitely took advantage of that before him i was with carlos oscar i don't know if you know carlos oscar yeah. so carlos oscar and i we toured for a while and so then that kind of phased out because carlos started doing um more cruise ships and things like that and he became a really christian comic mm. um oh, still, that's right i did hear doing, that yeah still doing really well and so then I did, the, you know, did a few episodes of Reno 911, and then Carlos was like, "Hey, you're my sister on the show. You want to be my sister at on shows for, you know, around the country?" Wow. And I was like, "Yeah." So we had such a great time. We had it, the run. It could have kept going, but he turned to me at one point and goes, "Okay, now you're too hard to follow." Like, <gasps> no. Yeah. And it was a beautiful moment. Really, it was a wow. really beautiful moment. He's like, mm, "Yeah." So well, it's he's your time. honest with you. Yeah. How about that? Yeah. It's crazy. But he, he was great. Well, you and... got to have some chops for him to say that. Yeah. yeah. And so you, that's how you develop as a comic, in my opinion. Don't yeah. play the Hollywood crowd. You can't. You're playing to the back yeah. of the room. You're playing to other comics. It's, yeah. in the, it's in your mind. You're not free. You're mm -hmm. not flowing like you were talking about. A real audience is what, is what makes us. Uh, absolutely. And it makes us over time. Um, you know, I was... I kind of ventured into like mentoring some like young comics and oh. they just it's a different generation yeah. and they think they go up once and have a decent set and they're like i'm a comedian i killed I don't know. now what's the next thing and i'm just like you're not a comic yeah 
you're not a comic yet. Mm -hmm. You got to tour. You got to go through each city. You got to figure right. out that one joke may work here, but it may not work in Ohio. It may not 100%. work in Miami. 100%. Like yeah. until you know, then that's a locked joke. And I'm like, it takes years and years to develop. Yep. And I just, it's really hard for me to like see them. But that's why also too, we're like going down to the improv, which is my home club, which I love, but I don't really go down there anymore because there's a lot of that. Yeah. And you're just like, Mm. It's it, it's it's really getting you know I don't want to sound like some old fart or something but it's I'll getting, sound it's, like an old fart. It's getting dark. <laughs> it's getting dark. Yeah. I talked to someone the other night. We're actually it was a different topic, but we we mentioned it. There's a whole uh, like the material now is a lot of they talk about eating ass. <laughs> it's like it's like that's the that's like in my generation was like McDonald's jokes. And this is the McDonald's jokes of this generation is eating ass. Oh my god. And tossing sal whatever it is. <laughs> but um it's appealing to one another and not appealing to a large group outside of this right. bubble. It's a bubble here and people yeah. don't realize that. It, it, and I'm happy that I did hit heavy road. The only sadness for me and I don't know if you can relate to this but maybe I saw the Comedy Store documentary, and I'm going to say it's sad. It's sad and also okay with it. With it. And they said, this is my family. There's a lot about the, the hang out at yeah. the store. I never hung out. Me neither. So the part of me was going, oh, you know, I missed on the family. And then another part of me went, I don't want that as my family. I, it's toxic. I don't want yeah. that as my family, people taking each other down. And there's no unity in comedy i mean there's mm. some little groups and things like mm. that which is nice but a lot of it is like f backstabbing and fighting one another fighting for spots and mm -hmm. trying to get that so when i mentor i actually mentor as well i love that you do that i yeah. didn't know you did i teach them the holistic approach Ooh. not the approach of joke writing it's a holistic approach which is about who you are Mm -hmm. that's who's going to be touring. That's who's going to be, because who you are is responding. For instance, I was on a lot of radio shows mm -hmm. growing up. So the same thing I'm doing with Howard Stern and, and is not the same thing I'm doing with Rick Dees, who's pressing buttons and sound effects. Right. And Howard Stern's a whole other vibe. Mm -hmm. I'm responding, not my jokes. And I try to say, you get to know you. And that's yeah. the most important thing you can bring to anything. Absolutely. And I, and I agree with you. And that's my philosophy as well. Um, I had the the privilege to have Sandy Chanley. Um, those of you who don't know her, she was um, a producer of Curb Your Enthusiasm. And then she went on and produced like Chris Rock special, Kathy Griffin, wow. D.L. Hughley. Like the list goes on and on. Adam Sandler. And she mentored me. And she would sit and say, tell me about yourself. Yeah. And I would tell stories. Yeah. And then she'd make a little note. Mm -hmm. And then we would enhance on the ones that she made the little note. And then we'd find the jokes within that. Did you have a retainer yeah. with her? Did she? Did you this hire was, her? I didn't even hire her. We we did an ABC Family project together. She was the executive producer, oh. and I was just drawn to her. And I she gave me her card, and I reached out to her. Yeah. And she goes, "Do you know how many people I've given my card to?" And she's like, "And you're the only one that's ever." followed up wow and i went what oh so she gave her card to a number of people but no one followed and up. no one followed up it's hollywood i know and i followed up i was like yeah. i just want to i want to sponge off of you like i want to learn yeah. and she was and she was not only like a mentor but she was also a really good friend and now you know times have evolved and she went on to do like more like cmt you know shows and things like that yeah. so the you know we came apart but there's always a love for her and she taught me so much and that's a that's a wonderful thing i'm glad that you appreciate that and you're grateful to that and i think that there's many relationships in hollywood that are transactional yeah it's like what can you do for me and i see them you know, hey, ha, 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 we're really bonding here. We're doing it. And then never hang out again. I know. You know, do you still have friends from back east? I'm mean, back in Florida. I have one really good friend. Like, I know from, if I reached out to a few, they'd be like, oh, hey. Yeah. But there's one really good friend. That remains that I, your friend. That remains your, my friend. Your true friend. Yeah. 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 She's a police officer. Oh, really? <laughs> she is. And she's like a beautiful police officer. They have billboards of her. I'm always like, go, girl. Like, wow. Yeah. Look at that. So she, she went down her road. She went, and her and... husband's like a detective, and they live in that oh. whole world. And she's just like, listen, if it doesn't work out for you, it doesn't matter what age you are, I can get you a job. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> I'm like, thanks. I'm going to be a police officer at 67. Let's go. <laughs> are you doing stand-up now? Um, no. I pulled myself off from since the pandemic. 
And I've been writing a lot. And what I did is I shifted gears and I pivoted to um, telling stories a little bit differently. And I grabbed my iPhone and, you know, just when everything was still shut down and I made two shorts. One was, you know, about grieving because I, it was such a hard time for me, you know, losing the stage, losing television and film, losing our outlets. And I lost mm. the most precious thing to me was my dog, the only like companion that during I've COVID. Had during COVID, oh, our, our dog died during COVID oh, as well. Yeah, it was, it was it was rough because you couldn't even do do it the right way. You couldn't either. do it the right way. Are you too? And well, the the fortunate thing was he made it out of where they said twice that he was not going to make it, and then finally made it into my arms, and then I made the choice for the doctor to come to the house, so we were together. Oh, came to the house. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. I'm so grateful that he fought for me that way because he was. I mean, people would walk by him, and his name was Mr. Jack. People would walk by him and go, that's that's not a dog. That's What is that? Because he had, like, those eyes that were just, like, he was on the planet for me. Like, wow. I knew that. So it was a very, it was a very hard time because I didn't understand because he was always so healthy. And then this heart failure came from nowhere. Mm. And, um, and anyway, so I, I was just, like, in a frantic, and I didn't know what was going to be what anymore. And so... I just pivoted and I started going, okay, um, what do I do? Because I am a person that can't curl up in a ball. It's no. just not me. And um, I've always been an athlete um, because of like ADHD. I don't take medication. So it was like I launched a boxing program in Equinox. And those are always been like side little fun gigs to get a free membership. you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, – People started reaching out to me and saying, can you train me in your backyard? Wow. And I was like, during COVID. I was like, yes, 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 yes. And I just packed my schedule with that. And that's like, that's where I pivoted. So then when things were starting to open up, I was like, how do I want to tell stories? Because stand up, they're so woke right now. And my niece was going through what we had discussed about. And I was like, I just... I'm afraid I'm going to use that mic as something else. So I I went ahead and I said, okay, um, I'm going to tell some stories behind the camera. And mm-hmm. I said, it's time for me to direct. Like I felt it. And my friends around me said, I think you are an amazing director. Because they've seen me on set where I like come in and I'll be like give ideas and things yeah. like that. So I took my iPhone and I made a little short, sent it to a really big director that I know. And he goes, did you shoot this on the red? This is amazing. No, like, really? <laughs> yes. What did you shoot? Yeah. You shot it on an iPhone, iPhone. Like 13, 14? Yeah, it was a 14 at the time. And it was a, uh, did you use the the setting? Um, I, what, what setting? The pan, or not. Oh, the, I, used, I used the wide lens and yeah. regular. Okay. Um, I like a lot of movement, um, but I also edited on iMovie of all that. Like and I was just like. someone Poop. else was in this with you or other people oh, in I it? I wasn't in it. I directed it. No so, way. So oh, wow. Carlos Alas Rocky was in it and Jenna Capergere. So, no way. By the way, she says hi. So, <laughs> oh wow, yeah. I love her. Yeah. I go back way back with that's her. That's what like, she said. I'm talking. She was a kid when I met her. Wow. Yeah. Like, that's like my best friend. She saved she me. She is not. She saved me during the pandemic. I pretty much so lived. You told at her me house. you were coming here. She was like, "Tell you, I said hi." Oh, <laughs> I love her. I've always loved her, but I never see her anymore. Man, She's this is going to be my excuse to get in yes. touch with her. Well, hang. We'll just go hang. Yes. Yes. I'm She's about so vibration. Awesome. You have a great vibration. She's always had a great. You know, yeah. I just like to hang with people without the transactions and without the. The goals yeah. and the agendas and stuff like that. And I yeah. can tell you're one of those people, you know, and you For pivoted sure. into something else. Oh, yeah. Which you got to get to here. But this was the craziest thing I do- have ever done. This is the crazy moving to L.A., not knowing a soul, following my dream. Whatever. But the e-commerce world is probably the craziest thing I've ever experienced. E-commerce. It is like a whole nother world in our computers. And it is scary. Like yeah. it is, it really is. If, if you make a lot of money too, you make a lot of money. But the clients that I was training really were trusting me, and I was able to think outside the box. And I was noticing how like people's core is like the last thing to get really tight. You know, we can oh, lose baby. weight. On, oh, yeah, that's Everybody. my biggest issue. Everybody's issue. When I'm naked, I mean, no. When I, my I have like little boobs, mm-hmm. and I have a belly. I look like a capital B. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I need some I need some help like bringing down the B. <laughs> bringing the down bot- the B. Bringing down the bottom B. <laughs> like that. You know, I, I I've got a little bit of dad bod, you know, <laughs> father figure I like to say. So that's what this was this, invented you, you for. You brought like, this for me? Is this, this one's mine? for you. This is for you. Oh but God, I will so have to ex- I want to explain it to you. Okay, um, please. Uh, so tell me how it works. The cool thing is it's called core set. So a play on words for core set. Yeah. Um but this silver lining inside, we went through so many different fabrics, and the silver lining inside is kind of is like a heating element. So even if you just put it on and put it tight and like set around, it'll start to heat up, and then you can make it even tighter. It works as like a back brace. Boom, number one, right? Number and you're two, sweating, and, so you're sweating. And you're calories sweating, out. yeah. And it's not so much like that one's not going to make you have lose one of these, weight. By the way, a different version. Yeah, it's not going to make you. It's not like a waist trimmer. Oh, it's but not. But it's going to make you lose. You know, you're not going to be like, no, I'm all skinny. No, <laughs> you got to use it to really get the benefits. Yeah, yeah I know, right? You're like, ding. But this is one that you can use without making so much effort. So there's a big, strong Velcro here. And then there is a pocket right in here. Mm-hmm. So when we first started experimenting, I started pushing down You're on people. You're doing people's... prototypes. Well, yes. And, th- and this was like before the prototype. When I was training clients, I noticed that when they were doing crunches, their stomach expanded. And I was like, why are you breathing through your stomach? Like, you need to breathe through your lungs and your back. And their backs would lift and their, their you know, their ri- ribs lift. And you see a lot of that on Instagram because it looks sexy when the girls are like, you know. And you're like, that's no wrong. That's so wrong. Yeah. Um, so I said, I'm going to put pressure on you. So I put pressure on them to keep their back flat with a pelvic tilt and drop their chest. And I was able to contain the muscle. So the muscle only learned that it could live in a smaller space. So it wasn't getting expanded. It was getting tighter. And I was like, okay, this is taxing. I can't do this on a ton of people. So I put like a weight on top of them. But the weight, you know, wasn't secure. So then I went and bought one of those waist trimmers and I put the weight inside. And then I was messing around with it. And then I made a pocket on one of them and I put it in. And everyone, this is amazing. You have to make this. I go, but no one's going to buy a belt with just a pocket. Like, this is ridiculous. Yeah. So they said, what else is the other thing? Well, when people start to lose weight and get the tighter core, their skin gets loose. Because now you have that extra skin. Mm-hmm. So I was like trying all different things. I was like, hmm. I go, what if I scratch you in between sets? This is how close we got, that all these people. Because we all thought the end of the world was going on, you know? So <laughs> right, we're, right, right. they're like, yeah, scratch me. Go ahead. <laughs> like, <laughs> so I was like, they would do a crunch. And I'd be like, and then push it out. And then, and I would scratch blood flow up to the surface. Kind of creating that trauma, like oh. how um, cupping does or whatever. Sure. So it heals faster, and the Even skin acupuncture totally, and right. the skin looked tighter. Sure. And I went, okay. So again, trying all different materials. Oh my yeah. god, we even tried one that, you know, when you put your um, your office chair on that those plastic things yeah. that have the things. We tried that. Mm. We've tried so many stuff, and it was the acu um, acupressure these little knobs Which that I've were the used ones. These before, yeah. And they're sharp, like they're sharp to the hand. Right. But if you have a T-shirt on or, or whatever, you know, and then girls love putting it directly on their skin, you'll eventually get there. No, no, um, I'm brutal. You're brutal? Okay, oh, then I'm, you would I'm, love it. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah, you would love it. So that just I go goes. I've been acupuncture for years. I don't even oh, go to a regular doctor. That's, oh, I love that. I love that. Um, I, I don't even know who my regular doctor is. I don't have a, <laughs> a general practitioner or whatever it is. And by the way, really healthy. See? Like people can't, they yell at me. You need to, you go to the doctor. No, no, I go to my healer. I, go, I like the healer. I like the healer. I like to go internal yes. for the solutions. Yes. And that includes my mind. Yes. Which the mind is a very, very do you, when you train someone, do mm-hmm. you talk about your mindset? Oh, yeah. And I make jokes too, because I'm, that's why they never left. Because <laughs> they go, Julie, it's not like, because they go, what is it? Because other people go, what's it about you that makes you so special? Why all your clients won't leave and you charge them so much? Yeah. And I go, I think it's love. I make them laugh. I care yeah. about them. I change their bodies. And I'm like, I'm in it. I'm not sitting there going, mm hmm, mm hmm. Because at the end, I want to do film and TV. I want to do, you know, maybe eventually go back to comedy and do a tour. So this right now, the only reason why it still exists is because their happiness means so much to me. So, and they saved me. They saved me during a time Mm -hmm. that I was like, what is, I don't know what to 
to. Yeah, or you used the word pivot. There was a lot yeah, of pivoting going on. A lot on. of pivoting. I was playing in a backyard of uh, Harrison Ford where he <laughs> raised his kids in the backyard. I'm pl- performing in a backyard in Venice. I don't know if you did that <laughs> gig with a, po- a pool between us with the audiences on the other side of the pool. Oh, no. And I kept thinking of Harrison Ford like yelling at his kids, do another lap, damn it. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a lap pool in the back. Of, and I'm going, what, what the hell am I doing? And a guy farted like really loud during the show. <laughs> oh, my God. We all, all the comedians are like, what the hell just happened? Oh, That's man. what ha- the pandemic was no good for comedians, even no, though it. we should have been essential workers. We should have been. And, and it was Not. scary coming back because I actually went to, and I won't say the club's name, to a holiday party. And I was nervous about it. It was like right when things were starting where yeah. they were doing the outdoor comedy mm-hmm. and stuff. And they had a ho- or a holiday party. And I was like, oh, man, this is not dangerous. I'm so nervous. And I went. And sure enough, it wasn't COVID, but I got real sick. Oh, really? And I was oh, you like, didn't get COVID. Thank you had it recently, though. Recently, the first time I ever had it. Like, yeah. I think I had it before it was COVID <laughs> right, because right, right. I felt like I was going to die, like, yeah. around Super Bowl time. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what is this? If I lived in the 1800s, I'd be dead. <laughs> what is going on? Like, all I wanted was oranges and orange juice. and I lost weight. Yeah. Did I you lose weight? I, had, oh, I lost tons. Oh, good for you, because guess what? When I had COVID this last Again? night, all I wanted to do was eat. I was so sad. Was the I was just laying there. I was like, <laughs> I could taste everything. I never lost my smell. Oh, you didn't? Really? Yeah. I was like, where's that? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I didn't really. I mean, I got hit, but mine was mostly a cough, Uh-oh. and I just didn't feel like getting up or eating. Uh-huh. Sometimes in life, though, you need to take a break, and that's that. Maybe what happens with many illnesses, yeah. it's like the big G up there is trying to say, hey, take a break. Oh, I just slow down. I just had that yeah. last week. We went to Palm Springs with my boyfriend's um, family. We do a spring break trip yeah. every year. Last year was Disney World, my favorite. Um, and this is year, it really? Oh, I love Disney World. Disney World or Disneyland? I love them all. I love you them too? all. There's something about people dressing up ridiculous oh, wow. and not caring that makes me so happy. And I'm just like, look at that person wearing wings and Mickey Mouse ears and spilling ice cream on their shirt. I just Until love you it. you go backstage <laughs> and there they are with their head off. That's, no, that's, that's scary. That's, 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 that's frightening if yeah. you're a kid. I had it happen with my kid. Was, <laughs> oh, gosh. We, we took a wrong turn and there's, there's a Mickey with the head off. <laughs> Smoking a cigarette. <laughs> Smoking yeah, a cigarette. Like, exactly, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it was... It, uh, I, I am the opposite. You, you know, this is the first time we'll disagree. But I would never, I'm never going to, I'm not going to tell you. I don't like it. <laughs> Me not, and Jenica. I'm not taking uh, that have, away from you. We have She's, season passes. Yeah. Really? We, yes, we go together. Well, you'll be jealous. The only way I go is a guided tour. I will never go back. <gasps> I'm talking about oh. it is night and day. Oh, hello. No yes. lines right to the front, yes. although I feel like a jerk. No. Here's this gigantic line, and they go this way. Oh, and that's just go, amazing. sorry, people. I've got connections. <laughs> It's I love only, that. I'll never go again unless it's that way. Yeah. Because Walt took out all the orange trees and there's no shade. That's my resentment. Yeah. There's no shade anywhere. That's, and it's I like built some why, umbrellas like... or something. Well, there's no trees. Yeah. Because it took out all the orange. That's where it's in the yeah. orange growth. But that upsets me so much. And then it becomes not the happiest. It's the crappiest place on earth. <laughs> when I'm in line, sweating my ass off to go on a two and a half minute ride. <laughs> and I wait forever. <laughs> but, but when I'm jostled up there oh i like that that, that then, it, then it's fine because i love rides yes i, I love rides I just, too. they're exhilarating to me they make me escape from my reality for a yeah. little bit and mm-hmm. it's same with me and yeah. when i was a kid i have a dad and my, the one time my dad took me somewhere was an amusement park and wow. it's one of my greatest memories of my life oh i see it's going one ride after another with him he would try to crash into me into bumper cars yeah so it's a beautiful memory that i have so i still love those rides are exhilarating and stuff like that. I just can't stand when they last too short a time because I'm a, yeah, I'm a, I'm a long form guy. Yeah. Are you long form when you? Isn't it difficult sometimes when you have to write uh, TikTok and oh, Instagram? It gives me so much anxiety. It's so short form yeah. now. That's the society yeah. we live in a scrolling society. Yeah. I'm a storyteller, I aren't am. you? Yes. And yeah. it, it, well, that's what we grew up with. We learned yeah. it was like every 15 seconds you make someone laugh, but it's a story that because you have to captivate them and draw them in. And now I'm just I kind of like get lost. I'm kind of like, what is that? I don't know what's happening. Um, 
I, my one of the little girls, um, my boyfriend's cousin said, um, you just know your algorithms are messed up. And I'm like, oh can my. you fix my algorithms? Because I go, this stuff is like not good. That the comes metrics up. and <laughs> yeah. the algorithms and these, oh my, it's a yeah. trending. Yes. And, uh, yeah. I don't, I did not grow up like that. I, I was yeah. born at the wrong time. Well, here's the thing. <laughs> when you were young, Yeah. I think it was like, it, I, this is what I would do. I would do, I would take like my dad's Betamax and yeah. I was like a kid kid, yeah. make movies, cut the film, tape it together, yeah. like do things like that. And I made movies, but we didn't have the outlets to put it on. Can you imagine if we had that? We would totally be, you know, making yeah. our Instagram or whatever you would call we it were back actually, then. In film school, we were, they taught you yeah. that, how to use the razor blade and a, totally and uh you know you tape it all together yeah. i mean just imagine that now now it's just everything's so instant instant it, but we would have been like the popular i guess we would be getting those contracts if if it was that back prob then probably i got yeah. my contracts from doing it the old school way of yeah. that time and then there's all these adjustments all along the way i remember when dane cook he was the first guy to do myspace yep and that made his career. Mm -hmm. I was the Dane Cook of mailers. I used to do mailers with a yeah. stamp, something <laughs> called a stamp and a mailbox. <laughs> and I would mail these things out. I had a fan club. Yeah. And that's the way I did it back well, then. Well, I remember I when I nice first career. moved here, you were like the king. <laughs> I was like, I was like, what? Wow. Like, yeah. yeah. You were the king. I mean, you still are, but like, well, no, no. from a new person's eyes. Obviously, obviously not anymore. But, and, and I'm okay with it. Um, I'm just going to keep on doing what I do, and you're going to keep doing what you do. And yeah. whatever's in front of you. By the way, I wanted to do one little compliment here. Sure. I'm sure you had to go through the design. I love the design, this Thank logo. You. That's a great logo. And you, you worked so. on that. Worked on that, yeah. Yeah. Isn't that's, that cool about yeah. creation is you also bring in other people yep. that kind of like do things that you're not so great at. Uh, it, that's the cool thing about doing all of this is – it was finding all these elements, and I will say for anybody out there, just, you know, has a product that wants to get in an in e-commerce, I learned so much. And the one big thing I learned is don't put it on Amazon right away. I got it on Amazon. I went through the whole thing. I felt so proud of myself. Yeah. I got it on. They are in a business of suppressing uh, small businesses. Yeah. So. They took half of everything mm -hmm. that I did, and then they would make you buy in-house ads. Mm. So I sold so many units because of people I know in the beginning. The first six months was on fire, and then they blacked out my store because a Prime Day was coming up. And this is why I'm saying there's like this whole dark world over there. Mm. A Prime Day was coming up, and they had other manufacturers are in, comp in comp on competition and put them at my price and move them up. Mm. And they said it was a glitch in the system. There was nothing that they could do. Sure. So I say, make sure, just put it directly on your site, which is now directly on my site on corsetbyjilly.com, and just monetize it that way. Then you can have a personal connection with the people that are buying wow, it. Wow, yeah. You know, and I couldn't do that. They didn't give me any emails. They rejected me, by the way. Did they? I can't get an Amazon store. Well, good, and I don't. have a number of products. Well, now you're t you're, you're my intervention. <laughs> yeah, I don't. Thank you for sitting me down. <laughs> you cannot do this. <laughs> Craig, no longer. No, could. no. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, I've got, well, you're actually going to get one of my mugs. Oh, that's awesome. Stuck between Namaste and Kiss My Ass. I love it. That's so, very, such my life. <laughs> very you. Very, it's a lot of comedians. We, we want to be good people, and we have great intentions, and we are spiritual and into personal development, but mm -hmm. there's another side of us that, yeah. You got it used to be suck my but then I turned into kiss my ass. <laughs> much more appropriate, much more uh, acceptable. <laughs> but although I just did a Mormon show, it's for Mormons what? and I had to clean it up so much I, oh. I couldn't even say ass. So you were like kiss my bum? Bum, yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my tush. Is, is it like, like, no, that's no good. That's, oh, that's no, no, too, too much. Yiddish. It's too Yiddish or something. But well, what a pleasure having you here. I yeah. mean, and I mean that. So, thank you. Can you hang another hour or do episode two? Yes, let's do it. <laughs> I'm already drove 14 I'm, hours I'm to get here. I'm <laughs> semi kidding. I'm semi kidding. But what does your boyfriend do, by the way? Uh, he works in tech sales. 
tech yeah. sales. Yeah. Did you, now, were you with him during the pandemic? No. Because you I, talked about this whole grieving process. That was alone. That was alone. That makes it worse. That was alone. So you met him during the pandemic? So I met him about a year after Mr. Jack passed. And I was going to the ocean a lot because I was living in Beverly Hills. Oh. And I was going to the ocean a lot because that's the only place so I felt. Healing. Oh, yeah. so beautiful. Um, And then a couple of my friends, I was going to meet them out there. And they were like uh, out there way early watching the volleyball tournament. And they're like, come meet us. We met a bunch of these guys and we're just like stopping by to freshen up. Meet us there. I was like, okay. And I walked in and it was like totally normal. Like we walked past each other and he goes, whoa, who are you? (laughs) Whoa. And I turned and it was my heart gravitated. He looks like nothing I would ever date. Not like not that it was like, I have to know this person. No. I was like, I don't know what it is. I have to know this person. And I don't know how spiritual all the listeners are and stuff, but through my valid- people, mine are oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, and so am I. So. There is a definite connection there. Wow. I, I look at him, and he's the most beautiful thing to it's me. It's a divine connection. Yes. yes, it's ethereal. You can't describe yes. it. Yeah. And I've always had that vision of like I'm going to be with someone that's in the business. We're going to be a power couple. We're going to do things <laughs> together. Da-da. And he's so not, and he's not even interested. What's he, the age difference? Ten years. Of he's older. He's younger. Ten years I, younger. I thought he was older. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then finally, like we were we went on a few dates, and then he says something, and I went what and then i'm like uh oh my gosh i i gotta tell him like it's and then i told him and he went what like this and i go is this the problem and he goes no no I get, and it's not been a problem if you have yeah. that if you have that that's everything i mean it's uh i had a great marriage for a long time and it was all about that divine ethereal uh, light connection yeah. and it was about source and that was it and once that starts to go away though once you don't once you get out of that practice then mm-hmm. things are gonna go south yeah so congratulations yeah. on you. finding that and and just and going with your instincts yeah. even though he doesn't look like what you thought right or is he the age you thought either right and i do say this what does you he know? look like that that he's not what type looks like, would you, you know think what he, he looks like for? a jewish agent that's what he looks like. Okay. Yeah. He's just like, you know, like that kind of, 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 you know, mover and shaker. Like, you know, just uh-huh. like, hey, da, 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 da. but he's really kind. Like uh-huh. he's a kind person. Yeah. Good. So, but he just, I don't know. So that's why I always look at him. Like if you put a suit on right now, you would look like my agent. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just weird. But, um, but I, you know, we even have those talks. We're very open where it's like, we're meant to be together. We know we're supposed to be together. Wow. There are lessons that are being right. learned from each other. And it's all free will, though. So if like if it does not work out, uh, there's not it's OK, you know, but all I know right now, it, this works. So that's how we try to live on the daily, because there's times I'll get frustrated and be like, why well, don't I got a ring on my finger? And he's just <laughs> he's You're like, not, you don't. Do and then that. I don't. Care. That's not you. I know. And then he, I'm like, that what am I doing? So not you. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you did it in character. Yeah. <laughs> why am I going to ring with my finger? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see that doing. I can't see Jilly doing that. Exactly. <laughs> well, I think that that's a nice way to wrap up our podcast today because we talk about turnarounds and, you know, give people tools. And, yeah. and that would be a good thing to follow is follow your true heart, your authenticity. Listen to that. Not all the standards that we go, wait, he's too old. He's not the type that I go for looks wise. You had a connection that you cannot describe that is, it has no kinks in it. It's just pure. And that's what hit the heart, hit the heart. Hit the heart. And that's the message I hope people go with. Yes. It happened with your creation here. I can't creation wait to try, to try the course. And also course happened set. with pivoting with uh, in, within directing too. So there's a lot of change, but I embrace it. Embrace so, it and yeah. go with it and find other people that want to go on the journey with you, okay? Heck yeah. I'm going to take you on the road with me. Oh, let's do it. You know why? Because I want to go to graveyards and stuff. I'm tired of staying in my hotel room. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we'll do some skydiving. I want to do all everything. <laughs> I, st- I, go and I stay in my room by myself all the time. Uh, I tour by myself. No, I actually started to take, uh, I think he's here, Jack. I take Jack with me on the road awesome. sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I give people an opportunity. I say, listen, I'll mentor you. Yeah. You know, and I hopefully they'll listen. And some people are not ready for that. They don't want to yeah. listen. They don't, they're not ready to be mentored. Or they think they're They think they know amazing. everything. And, yeah. Well, yeah, they think they know everything. Mm-hmm. They get a couple laughs here at the ha-ha, this and yeah. whatever. You know, oh, I don't need that. 
I think mentorship, I was so happy to hear when you said that. It's such a beautiful thing to pass it on. Why be so selfish? By the Why? way, you're a workout person. Skills. Look at oh, this. Oh, what's this? Look at this, what I have for you. Mm. Read that, baby. Read it dun, out loud. Dun. Read it out loud. Before this is... you train. Yes. Peak performance, pre-workout. Oh, I love pre-workout. This is your oh, pre-workout. This, this is your gift, another along this with your namaste. And I can't read the rest of it because I need glasses, so um, so thanks. It's biotech, <laughs> biotech. It's V-Y-O. Oh, biotech? Biotech. What's is the it... difference in biotech and biotech? Well, this is the difference. Mm -hmm. What do you mean the difference? It's the same word, biotech, V-Y-O. But isn't there biotech also? Uh, bio. It, it's oh, bio, it's, nutritionals it, is biotech. Yes, yeah, okay. biotech nutritionals. Okay. Got okay. it. So um, this is great. How I, much does how much caffeine does it have in it? That I do not know the answer. There's not a lot. It's very high quality cool. ingredients. But nobody knows this. that I'm hearing this in my headphones. I'm oh. looking like I'm a genius. <laughs> like I know the answers to this. <laughs> oh um, God, you're this. awesome. I'm yeah, so awesome. happy you were Thank here, you. Jilly. And um, follow you where? How do we follow you? On all social. It's at Jilly online. At Jilly online. At That's Jilly how online. I found her. Yeah. You can find her too. Follow her. She's <laughs> awesome. And uh, let's get together with Jenica too. That would be awesome. We'll just yeah. go hang out. And I was going to say triple date. I don't, I don't know where we. Well, maybe off. Maybe off some day. Maybe I'm going to find a good person. You will. It's, it'll happen. It'll happen. It's going to happen very soon. Well, first of all, Jenica, it knows everybody. She's going to be like, okay, Craig, what do you need? I guess. <laughs> do you know I fixed up nine marriages? What? I'm so good at it, but not myself. Uh, I mean, so, I, oh, I take yeah. it back. I had a really good, blissful marriage for mm -hmm. a long time until things happened. She hit a point in her life and just, and there's no control over it. Yeah. You know, that's, and that's the end of that connection. Yeah. Just because. This person feels like I have to go somewhere else. You know I feel I mean? that way. Like yeah. we're we're like this energy right here. Energy, yeah. And then there's other people that come in, but they're never they never in deep into our energy. Meaning they mm. they come in and they ride along with us, and then sometimes they ride away with us. Yeah. And it's like, how long do they ride with us? Is totally it's up to point. them. It's free will. I never thought of it that way. It's yeah. a very good point. But yeah. that's us. We are consistent. And people come in and people come out and you grow together or you fall off. But I will say, not in an arrogant way, that you and I are high vibration energy. Yes. And not it's not for everybody. I know. <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. You just it's... got to admit it sometimes. And I actually have a mentor, a coach who just, he talks about it all the time. He goes, you know, sorry, you know, this is just the way it's going to be. There's people that won't like you. They won't like it. They won't, they're just not a vibe for them. Mm. So we go hang out with the Jenicas and the use of the world. All Yay. right, Jilly. All right. I hope you all had a good time. Please spread the word. It's called Still Standing Up with Craig Shoemaker. There's my little sign. I like that little logo. It's pretty good too. And go to Corset. Go get yourself a corset. I'm going to show you my before and after yes. in a few episodes from now. All right. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs>